praise God. Good morning, family. Welcome to our broadcast this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Pastor Ricardo Finn. I want to encourage you this morning to get out your Bibles, get a pen, get a notebook, grab a cup of coffee as we share God's precious word together. Now, before we begin, let us just open up in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you this morning, Lord, for this time of fellowship, Lord God, that you've graced and blessed us with father father we thank you in accordance with your word where two or more are gathered in your name there you are in the midst of them father father we thank you for your presence here this morning thank you for your presence O oh lord in the lives O oh god of every person that is connecting with us this morning father in the name of jesus lord god i thank you this morning for your word which is bread unto us O god the bread of life to nourish us to sustain us O god to keep us O god and to cause us lord god to grow in jesus blessed name father we give you thanks we give you praise glory honor we give you all the worship O god and i pray this morning that you'll anoint my mouth to declare your word anoint my vocal cords O lord as i share your word this morning in jesus blessed name father we give you all the praise and the worship in jesus blessed name and all of god's people said amen amen and amen well praise god once again thank you so much for joining us this morning it is so great to um, share the word of god with you thanks for inviting us into your home this morning i would like to speak to you on the subject of you are to others what god is to you i'll say that again you are unto others what god is to you and um, it's just a brief word of encouragement that I'd like to share with you and um, I want to glean this morning from the life of uh, David and um, if we look at the life of David uh, we go to the book of Psalms chapter number 27 and we can begin from verse number 1 All right now david says here he makes a very bold statement he says the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear the lord is the strength of my life of whom shall i be afraid i like that the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear the lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid? Praise God. Now, looking at the life of David, David did not really have a very easy life. You know, many of us are familiar with the account of David's life as a young boy, as a young man. Um, he was, you know, one who would tend the sheep of his father. He was a shepherd. Hence, we find David author's most profound psalm that many of us are familiar with and i want to read it to you from the passion translation and um, you know so that we can understand who god was to david we find from verse number one he says yahweh is my best friend and my shepherd Yahweh is my best friend and my shepherd. That word shepherd, when it's translated, the original Hebrew meaning, it means a lover of sheep. A lover of sheep. He says, Yahweh, God, is my best friend and my shepherd. In other words, he's my best friend who loves me. I always have more than enough. I like that. He says, Yahweh is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. In other words, I, I lack nothing. It means I'll never be in lack. I'll never be in want. Because of God Almighty, the Almighty One, the El Shaddai, the many-breasted One, he is the God of more than enough. He is my best friend and he is my shepherd. 
Wow, praise God. He loves me. A shepherd, a shepherd loves the sheep. A shepherd will go at great length to defend and protect his sheep and ensure that his, that his sheep are well taken care of. And this is what David says about God, that God is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace near the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me the right path and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me for you already have. Hallelujah. Even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. He's saying, God has already conquered me. In other words, he's conquered me, he's taken over me, he's taken control of me. And, you know, if we look currently, I mean, the past week for many of us in South Africa has truly been a valley of deep darkness. And I believe God has shown how strong he is. God has shown how strong he is in that God, because God has conquered us and we belong to him. God has watched over us. God has protected us and God has brought us through something that many, I think many were really devastated and many were worried about their lives. But God came through, praise God. Hallelujah. He says this, he says, you already have conquered me. Therefore, fear will never conquer me. Fear cannot take control over me because I belong to you. He says, your authority is my strength and my peace. Your authority, God's authority, God is in control. That's our strength and that is our peace. He says, the comfort of your love takes away my fear. Wow, the comfort of your love takes away my fear. In John's epistle, we find the Apostle John writes, he says, perfect love casts out fear. And David says this, the comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious feast, even when my enemies dare to fight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. You become my delicious feast, even when my enemies dare to fight. It means it doesn't matter who's trying to fight you. You only delight yourself in the Lord. Praise God. You don't fight back. Never ever fight back. We were never called. God has never ever called us to fight back. God has called us to love people. God has called us to embrace people. People are not our enemies. Must remember that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. That is who the true wrestle is with the spirit in control of, of the people, but never people. He says this, you are my delicious feast, even when my enemies dare to fight. In other words, I delight myself in God. I do the things that please God. And as you do that, you'll see how God causes your enemies to be at peace with you. He goes on to say, you anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. Oh, I love that. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my cup overflows. I want you to underline this, friends. He says, you give me all I can drink of you until my cup overflows. Until my cup overflows. Jesus says this. He says, he who believes in me from deep within his being will flow rivers of living waters. It is through our fellowship with God. Fellowship with God is so, so, so important. It is through fellowship with God that we allow God to deposit into our lives. We allow God to deposit into, into our spirit all that he is. As you 
Meditate on the word of God and as you spend time in prayer, quiet time with the Lord is so, so important. It is so important. Start your day with God throughout your day, you know, through your day. You can, you know, you can speak to God in your car. You can speak to the Lord in a supermarket. You can speak to the Lord wherever you are, in your workplace, in your business, in your school, wherever you are. You can speak to God because He is the omnipresent God. God is all over. And it's through fellowship with God that we find that God will deposit into us His Word, He, you know, His character, His nature, all that He is. I mean, in John John's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 19, Jesus says something. He says, the Son can do nothing except that which He sees His Father do. If you understand who your Father truly is, you'll behave like your Father. I mean, if you look at it this way, um, your Father's a millionaire. You're going to behave like a millionaire. Your Father is the King. If your Father's the King, you're going to, you know, you get, you get schooled and you get trained. So that you know, so that you can take over. But here's the thing: I'm not. I'm not saying that you're gonna be God. No, you you can never take His place. But you are His representation. You are His representative in the earth. The Bible says we are ambassadors of Christ. We are here, standing in the place of Jesus Christ. Christ resides within us. It is through our fellowship with, with Jesus, through our fellowship with the Son of God, who has reconciled us to the Father. By reading the Word of God, we see Jesus, and we allow God to download and deposit into our spirit, into our life, all that He is. So that when we go in our day-to-day -day lives, we are able to be unto others what God is to us. God, you know, the um, Apostle Paul in the book of Corinthians, he says, God, the God of all comfort, who comforts us so that we may comfort others. God comforts you so that you can comfort others. God heals you so that you can heal others. God saved you so that you could save others. God provides for you so that you can provide for others. Praise God. God gives you peace so that you can give peace to others. God loves you so that you can love others. Because God is love. We, we, we abide in Him. He is love. And as we abide in His love, love becomes a part of us. Love becomes a part of our nature. And then we find that, you know, you start loving people regardless and in spite of what people say about you or do to you, you love them nonetheless. Because you know who you are in Christ Jesus. You are a love child. A product of a love God, a God who is love. Amen. Now, this is what David says. He says, you anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my cup overflows. Hallelujah. Start overflowing. Overflowing with life, the life of God, the thoughts of God, the word of God. You begin to think like God. You begin to behave like Him. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, I'm just thinking this week. I remember, you know, when we were watching, you know, uh, the news and, you know, all the press reports coming through and many were saying that the police, our police are overwhelmed. They are not, you know, there will never be enough. And, you know, and they looked and they said, yeah, but even with the soldiers, but look, look how God works. And you know, I remember hearing that and the Lord prompted us to pray. And as we were praying, the Lord directed us to the book of Judges with Samson. And the Lord said, look at Samson, one man with a donkey jawbone, slew 1,000 Philistines with a donkey jawbone. And we began to pray and we said, Lord, I th we thank you that you'll anoint every person that has, you know, that you've called and that you've appointed to be there and stand in the gap for our nation, stand in the gap for our country. That, Lord, you'll give them the strength, that very strength and anointing that Samson had, you'll place it upon them. And then the Lord led us to the book of Acts chapter 18, verse 10, where we find that Paul was in the city of Corinth. And then the Lord appears to him in Verse number 10, and he says, do not be afraid to speak, Samson, uh, uh, rather Paul. Do, uh, do not be afraid to speak, Paul, 
For I am with you. I have many men in the city. Praise God. I have many men in the city who will support you. And we saw God come through. Praise God. We saw this is the word of God coming to life in South Africa. So all of my our South African friends and family, really we are seeing the scriptures coming to life. That is what it is when we look at our communities and we see how people from all walks of life, it doesn't matter who they are, what they look like, but all coming together to stand up for their communities and stand up for our country and stand up for our nation, that we can be a proud nation, proud to be South African. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is a wonderful country to live in. And you know what makes it wonderful is that God has his hand upon our nation and God is in control. Praise God. Hallelujah. Verse number six. Now, David says, so why would I fear the future? You see that? Why would I fear the future? I have nothing to be afraid of because I have God in control. God is in God's authority is my security. Praise God. God's authority is my security. He says, why should I fear the future? Only goodness and tender love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. When your life is fully lived, when you fully lived your life upon this earth, you look forward to a glorious life that lies ahead of you. A wonderful life. Amen. That is what John says in John's uh, um, epistle in chapter number 4. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. As Jesus is now, so are we in this world. David says, the Lord is my shepherd, the Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. I shall not want, I shall not lack, I have more than enough. That is what David said in the book of Psalms, chapter 23. Psalm chapter 27, verse 1, we read it there. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? That means when darkness comes or tries to come and tries to blur my vision, I will not be in darkness because the Lord is my light. Even in the darkness, the Lord is my light. He is the one who shows me the way. He is the one that will give you the wisdom. He is the one that will give you the direction. Praise God. When you feel like giving up, it's the Lord who will encourage you. Amen. He says, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Wow, praise God. If you can understand that. I just shared with you about how um, if your father was a king and, you know, you grow up and you end up behaving like a king. If your father's a millionaire, you end up behaving like a millionaire. There's, there's just a certain way that you behave because because of your association with your father, because of the fellowship you have with your father. Amen. And when you look at it way in the beginning, when God first created man, when he first, the first man God created, Adam, when God created man, it was to have fellowship. That is what God desires. You know, those promptings that you get when um, the Lord would, you know, uh, awaken your spirit very, very often, sometimes just a, a very subtle to tell you, hey, it's time to pray or it's time to read the Bible. Don't neglect that. You find many times, many folk, and I could be speaking to you this morning, that you feel, oh, you know, you are tired, or you feel that, hey, you know, I don't feel like it. You know what? You're just becoming like Adam. You're hiding. Stop hiding and come out of hiding. When God tells you to get on your knees, or God tells you to open the word, do it. Because those are the moments where God wants to download into your spirit. And you find it, you know, it, it is there. It is those moments that God is downloading into you of himself. He's downloading himself into you. So that when you come out now and you face adversity and you face the, you know, the storms and the winds of life, that you are able to control them because now you know who you are in him. You are not doing it in your own strength. You're not doing it in your own ability, but his ability 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Wow. Hallelujah. So whenever God prompts you to do something, just go and do it. Amen. When you know that God is your provider, you find that you'll be a provider for others. You won't be worried about, you know, um, you know, where is it going to come from or where this is going to come from. You just know God is my source. If God is, when God becomes your source, you become the source of many others. When God becomes your peace, you become the peace of others because everybody else around you could be, you know, running helter-skelter because of worry and because of fear or because of anxiety. But not so with you. Once you are rooted and grounded in God, rooted and grounded in His Word, rooted and grounded in His love, it is impossible for anything to move you. And you find that others can feed off from you, that you can be a source of strength to somebody else. You can be a source of encouragement to somebody else. And the whole thing, it is not about you, it is not about me, it's never about us. God does that so that we can draw people unto Him. That is why God does that. So that we can draw people unto Him. So that we can reckon, you know, so that we can, um, the word I'm looking for is drawing people, in, in other words, getting people to be reconciled to Him. Reconciling humanity unto Him. Because once you understand who he is to you and who he has become to you, you can become that to others. That is what it's about. That is what this word is all about. That is what the gospel is all about. Reconciling humanity to divinity. Amen. Once you understand that, once you understand that, then you are able to become unto others what God has become unto you. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, you know, I just want to close with this one in the book of 1 Samuel chapter number 30. And we find um, it was an account in David's life where, you know, the enemy had come and they took their wives and their children captive and they took everything that was theirs. They just came in and they took everything captive. And we find in, in verse number 6 that the people were ready to stone David. Now this is the king, King David. People were ready to stone him because they were taken captive. So that's probably you this morning. Something has probably taken your joy captive. Something has probably taken your peace captive. No matter what it is, could even probably taken your home captive. It's your home, you know, everybody in the home is afraid or everybody in the home is worried. Worry, could, worry can keep you captive. You understand? So the people are ready to stone David. But the Bible says this about David towards the end of that verse. The Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. David strengthened himself. Another translation says David strengthened himself in the Lord. And that is what you need to do. You know, whenever these things happen, whenever discouragement seeks to come in, you encourage yourself in the Lord, strengthen yourself in the Lord. You see what David was doing? David was putting on his strength. Whenever you, you fellowship with God, whenever you read the word of God, whenever you are praying, you are putting on your spiritual armor. That is spiritual armor that you are putting on so that you can stand. You can stand. You will not fall, but you'll stand. The Bible tells us, put on the whole armor of God so that you can stand against the, the evil one in the day of adversity, in the evil day. An evil day will come, but it will not last. As long as you have your spiritual armor on, you will stand, hallelujah, you'll stand the test of time. You'll stand your test and you'll come out triumphantly, praise God. The Bible says David strengthened himself in the Lord his God and David inquired of the Lord, shall we go up against him? And the Lord responded, we serve a God who responds. When you pray, God hears your prayer and he doesn't just hear, but he answers, he responds to that prayer and God comes to the forefront, he comes to your side hallelujah just like david says god is my best friend he's my best friend so he be, you understand he becomes your right hand 
And he takes you, he leads you, he guides you, he goes into battle with you. And he fights on your behalf. This is, the, this is so wonderful. This is so wonderful. He fights on your behalf. You don't need to fight those battles. You don't need to fight to try and do something. God will do it for you. All you need to do is rest on his word. And God will come through for you. We find in verse number 18 of that same chapter, 1 Samuel 30, David recovered all. So I'm here to tell you this morning that you will recover. It doesn't matter what the enemy has taken from you. It doesn't matter what the enemy has stolen from you. Our God is a God who restores. He's a restorer. He says, I am a restorer. Praise God. And when you understand that God is my restorer, you're able to restore others. He restores you to go and restore others. There are many others that are broken. There are many others that are shattered. There are many others that are poor, that are broke, that are sick. God uses you to bring restoration in the lives of others. I believe we are in the greatest hour of restoration and God is going to come through and he's going to come through how? Through you and I. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you in this hour, friend, to Spend time with the word of God. Spend time with God. Pray. Speak to God. Speak to him as you speak to a friend. Hallelujah. Praise God because God wants to do something strong, something wonderful for you. He's your stronghold. He's your peace. He's your joy. He's your shield. He's your provider. He is your life. That's who God is to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. I trust that you've been blessed this morning. I know you've been blessed by this broadcast. And I want to encourage you to connect with us. The details are appearing on the screen right now. Write to us. Send us an SMS. Send us an email, a WhatsApp. We love to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests. We pray for you often. We thank God for you. And we thank God for the testimonies that keep on coming through. So send us those prayer requests. We love to connect and to hear with you and to, and to hear from you and hear what the Lord is doing in your lives. Praise God. Well, let us just close this morning with the word of prayer and with a blessing. Praise God. Just stretch your hands towards the screen as we pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you for every in individual, Lord, that is connected with us this morning. I pray, Lord God, that your hand shall be upon them for good, that you will bless them, prosper them, Lord. Cause them, Lord God, to increase in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you now. I pray for those who are sick, O oh God. I pray that healing will come to them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, the broken, that they be made whole in Jesus' name. I thank you now, Father. Father, I especially pray now, Father, those that have lost loved ones, Almighty God, that you will, Lord God, bring them comfort, console them Lord God in the name of Jesus by your spirit oh God give them strength and grace for this hour in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth Lord I thank you in Jesus name turn their morning oh Lord God into Lord into joy in Jesus blessed name Father I thank you now for every individual Father God whatever the need is Father that you meet them at their point of need we ask this in the name of Jesus Father I thank you now in Jesus wonderful name we seal it with the blood of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of you both now and forevermore in Jesus wonderful name and the people of God said amen 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 and amen well praise God this is Pastor Ricardo Finn saying thank you so much for joining us this morning. So good to have you join us. We love to hear from you. Keep walking by faith. Until next time, goodbye and God bless you.